Life Study of Mark, Message Two. The Lord had no form or comeliness, no physical beauty that he should be desired. Rather, he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows who was acquainted with grief. The Lord's life was a life of sorrows and of grief. His visage marred more than any man. Concerning the Lord Jesus, Isaiah chapter fifty-two verse fourteen prophesies: "As many were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man, and his form." More than the sons of men, this indicates that the Lord's appearance, His countenance, was mild. The word "mild" is a strong word that indicates that the Lord's visage was somewhat damaged or disfigured. Many years ago, a certain artist painted a portrait in which the Lord is depicted as a handsome man. That portrait is altogether false. Nevertheless, a great many Christians have a copy of that portrait in their homes. While I was traveling in central China in 1936, doing the work of preaching the gospel, I encountered a case of demon possession related to this picture. A young woman had become demon possessed, and those who were trying to help her referred the case to me. I told them that, for the most part, demon possession is due to the worship of idols, and asked if there were any idols in her home. They told me that there were no idols. However, there was a copy of that well-known picture of Jesus. I told them that the picture was an idol, and that they should take it down and burn it. After the portrait was burned, the demon left the young woman. To have such a picture of Jesus is altogether contrary to the scriptures. My purpose in relating this story is to point out the this fact. According to the Bible, the Lord Jesus did not have a handsome face; rather, his visage was mild, disfigured. Despised by men, abhorred by the nation, and the slave of rulers, Isaiah chapter forty-nine verse seven says, "Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, and His Holy One, to Him whom God despises, to Him whom the nation abhorred." To a servant of rulers, according to these words, the Lord Jesus was despised by men; he was abhorred by the nation, and he was the slave of rulers. In Hebrew, the phrase "a servant of rulers" means one held in thrall by tyrants. The Lord was a slave kept in thrall in slavery by tyrants, giving his back to the smiters and his cheeks to the persecutors. Isaiah chapter fifty verse six says of the Lord, "I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that pluck off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting." This is a very descriptive word, telling us how the Lord behaved Himself as a slave. He turned His back toward those who wanted to smite Him. He gave His cheeks to the persecutors, and He did not hide His face from shame. Not crying nor lifting up his voice, Isaiah chapter forty-two verse two indicates that the Lord did not cry or lift up his voice. He shall not cry nor lift up nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. This means that the Lord did not shout or make noise. Instead of crying out to make his voice known in the streets, he that was calm and quiet, not breaking a bruised reed. And not crunching a dimly burning flax, Isaiah chapter forty-two verse three and four say, "A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he has set judgment in the earth, and the isles shall wait for his law." According to these verses, the Lord will not break a bruised reed or crunch a dimly burning flax. The Jews often made flutes of reeds. When a reed was bruised and no longer useful as a musical instrument, they broke it. They also made torches with flax to burn with oil. The oil ran out, the flax smoked, and they quenched it. Some of the Lord's people are like a bruised reed that cannot give a musical sound. Others are like smoking flax that cannot give a shining light. Yet the Lord would not break the bruised ones, who cannot give. A musical sound, or crash the ones like dimly burning flags that cannot give a shining light. 
On the one hand, the law would not break a bruised reed or quench a dimly burning flax. On the other hand, according to these verses, he would not faint as a dimly burning flax, nor would he be crushed as a bruised reed. Given the tongue of the instructor, from Isaiah chapter fifty verse four, we see that as the slave of God, the law was given the tongue of the instructor. The Lord had God had given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning; he wakeneth mine ear to hear as the learned. Although as a slave the Lord was not a teaching one, he was nonetheless given the tongue of the instructed. He was instructed by God to know how to sustain a weary one with a word, because he had been instructed by God. He could sustain a weary one by giving him a single word. Such a word is able to minister life more than a long message. Trusting in God and setting his face like a flint, Isaiah chapter fifty verse seven says, "For the Lord God will help me." Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. Here we see that the Lord trusted in God and set His face like a flint, as the Lord Jesus was walking in God's way to fulfill God's will. His face was like a hard stone. In the matter of fulfilling God's will, He was very strong. Having borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, in Isaiah chapter fifty-three, verse four and five, we have this word concerning the Lord Jesus: Surely He had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem His stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But He was wounded for our transgressions; He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him. And with his stripes he will are we are healed. What is described in these verses is related to the Lord's death on the cross. He bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions and was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace, that is the chastisement for our peace, was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Oppressed and afflicted. According to Isaiah chapter fifty-three verse seven, the Lord did not open his mouth, but he was oppressed and afflicted. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. This means that when the Lord was brought to the cross. He was like a sheep dumb before the shearers. When he was oppressed and afflicted, he did not say a word. God laying on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah chapter fifty-three verse six says, "All we like sheep have gone astray; we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all." Then verse ten goes on to say, "Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him; he hath put him to grief." When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed; he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. From these verses, we see that God laid on him the iniquity of us all, bruised him, put him to grief, and made him soul to a, a trespass offering, pouring out his soul unto death. Isaiah chapter fifty-three verse twelve says, "Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he had poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors." The Lord poured out His soul as He was dying on the cross. He was crucified in the midst of two thieves, and thereby was numbered with the transgressors. The fact that He bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors was fulfilled by the Lord's prayer on the cross: "Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing." Cut off out of the Lord. 
of the living. According to Isaiah chapter fifty-three, verse eight, the Lord Jesus was cut off out of the land of the living. For the Lord to be cut off from the land of the living means that He was put to death 